Hey guys, it's the History Nerd, and here I am with Crusader Kings 2. Uh, finally doing a little... I don't know if I'm going to be doing a full, like, let's play of this, like a full-on playthrough. Um, this is a very long game, but this game is uh, on sale on Steam right now. It is 75% off, so it costs you 10 bucks. And, uh, I figured I would show it off. Because at that price, I think this game is really, really worth it. And I've tried to do a few recordings today. Um, none of them have really worked out, so this is my last shot at this. But I'm keeping an eye on the time. Hopefully... Things will go well, and we'll, uh, we'll actually get this uploaded. So, for those who haven't seen this game, uh, it's kind of like a medieval RPG grand strategy hybrid. Basically, uh, here is my character in the game, Guy the First of Jerusalem, and you rule the kingdom of Jerusalem through him. So, to start off with, we've got stats. Uh, we can see here, Guy is alright at martial, very good at stewardship, uh, horrible at intrigue, alright at diplomacy, and not very good at learning. These are his personal stats. Uh, so, events pop up that can let you affect certain traits uh, or other things that affect these stats. Then over here we've got our state stats. So you can see diplomacy there. So what's going on here is uh, spouse plus seven, counselors sixteen. So my wife adds basically half of her skills to the state, and we've also got our counselors. Now, these are all characters within the game, so like they all have their own unique stats, they all have their own wants, combat modifiers, uh, everything like it's very, very in-depth. Uh, so our chancellor here, his diplomacy skill goes towards state, our marshal, his marshal, etc, etc. Uh, with these you can also uh, get these guys to do missions w inside and outside your kingdom, depending. So we've got our chancellor here to go off and improve diplomatic ties with the Duchy of Antioch. This duke does not have a king. I am a king. So I'd kind of try to like to get that on, or to get him to pledge allegiance to me, because the more dukes you have, the better. Uh, we're gonna get our marshal to suppress revolts. This is because the people we are ruling over are Levantine Sunni Muslims. <coughs> And my king is a Frankish Catholic. Needless to say, they're not getting along. Uh, we're going to try and convert the population using our chaplain here. And slowly we'll wind up changing the culture of our ruling families, probably. Uh, research economic technology... And then taking a look at this guy, our, when our spy master doesn't like you, so here we can see all the opinions. Our spy master doesn't like us. Uh, so, we should probably replace him with someone who does. And you can see that's kind of hard. I'm going to replace him with you, just because uh, we're the same, we're the same culture, we're the same religion. It should be easier to get Hugh on my side than it is 
in fact, what you can do is grant these things called honorary titles. So, depending on your level of kingdom, you get different uh, titles. So, we'll find an appropriate one for a spy master. I think we'll go with this one. There we go. So now he likes me. Less of a threat. So in typical Paradox fashion, these are really in-depth uh, games. The, the UI is kind of clunky. Again, typical Paradox. But you can... These games just draw you in. Uh, earlier today... Oh, no, 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 sir. <clears throat> Earlier today, I tried to do a video, and it wound up being over two hours long. It felt like I had been playing for maybe 45 minutes. Okay. Alright, so that actually didn't become a jihad. What enemies of the faith, of your particular faith, tend to do is call a jihad. Ooh, this is going to be a tough war. Might not be a problem keeping this video short. <clears throat> so explaining what I just did there, uh, we've got two different groupings of military units. You've got ones that come from your own lands. So for example, Mirabel. This is one of our own uh, demoncies. Probably saying that wrong but I think that's what they're called. Anyway, <clears throat> uh, so we can raise 100% of the people in there, garrisons ours, we get all the taxes, whatever. These other ones, so uh, Nablus there, is actually owned by someone else. So we just get a fraction depending on, we get a fraction of the taxes, fraction of the military units, depending on our crown laws. Now I'm not going to go through and change these while we're at war, that's not really a good idea. But, <clears throat> you can see, if I raise crown authority, I get more levies. Um, I can just increase feudal levies, city levies, church levies, and their taxation levels as well. So... To prepare for the coming war, which is going to be pretty big. Yay! We're already converting people. <coughs> so we can see... Yeah. Typical Paradox fashion, the, the combat kind of comes down to who has the bigger Doom stack. Um, you can kind of work things in your favor. and get these organized while I can. So that's not a surprise. They weren't expected to win. Come on. Okay. <clears throat> so if you played one Paradox game for combat, you've pretty much... Paradox Grand Strategy game, I should say. You can pretty much get a handle on what's going on here. Now, there are a few things you can do to sort of tweak the battle in your advantage. Uh, what's a good idea? Because each uh, column sort of attacks separately, if you stack one side, so we can see here we've got about we've got over half the military, half the army strength on one side of the column. That'll hit much harder, and we'll do the same thing here. There 
we go. Did not want that to happen. Go, 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 go. Damn. I've been bested. <clears throat> Wonderful. And now I've been imprisoned. Wow, this game is going horribly. Yeah. Okay. I guess we made peace. Uh, we're still kings. Good, good. We just lost a lot of territory, that's all. Okay. Well, there was our first war. And it was a complete and utter failure. <coughs> Alright, so... Uh, now we've looked at laws, technology screen, uh, these are your tech focuses. Generally it's a good idea, it defaults to those three to start with, but depending on your situation it's probably better to change those. I'm um, going for defensive, because uh, as is obvious, I'm going to be at war quite a bit. So... These will give us uh, extended time procedures which means they're going to lose more and more of their men while they're attacking us. And castle infrastructure and improved keeps. I'm going to flip between these two to uh, build up my castle holdings, which are like this. Mirabel here is one, uh, Hebron and Aljun are my three holdings. So those are my personal holdings as the King of Jerusalem. Excellent. So we can see here, uh, because we're foreigners, you know, oh wow. So unfortunately my military is in such a state that that's kind of what you have to do. to put down these peasant uprisings. And instead of coming to the aid of Jerusalem, the Pope has called for a crusade in Andalusia. So we're not about to join that. We've got our own crusading problems in the Holy Land. So we've got another daughter. Ooh, and a son. Okay, so this changes everything. Uh, before uh, Princess Alice here was my daughter. Was my daughter. She still is my daughter. Was my heir. Uh, because of our inheritance laws. So now, my primary heir, because he's a boy, is now Jocelyn. E excellent. So, Prince Jocelyn uh, is now my official heir for the Kingdom of Jerusalem. So it's not just age, gender also plays a part. And we're gonna wait to build up the keep. So we'll just need to raise 400 gold to do that. Alright, so we've got a daughter who needs educating. Uh, before, these would pop up quickly, and I think if you declined the offer, you'd lose uh, favor with the person who's offering to teach your child. But, doesn't look like it's so now, which is good, because it's much better to pick the educator than just go with 
whoever offers. For instance, oh, in this case, it's better if I just teach my own child. Okay. So the difference between uh, your character educating a child and someone else is now you're going to get pop-ups, little events uh, for that character, and you can you can influence the development of that character. Okay, so because of my character's unique traits, I've got two different uh, unique options <coughs> for this event, and then just two stock ones. So because I'm tempered, I can gain a learning, which is what I'm going to do. Because Guy here is pretty much an idiot, and it'll be good to get that up. So here's an example of these events. Um, I can encourage her to turn her brave. And this one's a crapshoot. So we're gonna go with a surefire bet. Perfect. Typhus and Beirut. Just what we want. So that's good. We should see if we can actually... Won't accept it. I guess considering how badly we got our asses kicked, I can't blame him. Okay, so now they've called for a jihad against Jerusalem. We've got a peasant revolt, and soon we'll have hordes and hordes of Muslims storming across our border. Oh, I should remember, if you hold down control you'll actually raise troops everywhere except where there are enemies, and that's really handy. I wish I was smart enough to remember to use that more often. Excellent. So he won't be our vassals, but at least he'll join in the war. That's handy. Another option... Arg. Uh, to boost your military forces is to hire mercenaries. And they cost an initial outlay of gold. And then further upkeep. Now, since I'm in a holy war... Uh, if I had enough PD, I could raise... Uh, Crusader orders... Crusade, yeah, Crusader, Holy Orders. That's the word I'm looking for. And these guys cost PD instead of money, so that's useful if you're actually cool with the Pope. And then, as long as you're fighting um, an enemy of the faith, it doesn't cost you anything to keep them. Which is pretty handy. They're basically like free troops, and they're really good troops, too. Okay, so that's not really a surprise defeat in either of those cases. So what have we got? 18. But he hates me. No way. I rule. And yeah, the the thing is, with these Paradox games, they're probably pretty boring to watch. Uh, damn it, that's not what I wanted at all. Go back. Can't move them back. Um, but they're incredibly fun to play. And I don't know if that really gets translated via video. But like I say, earlier today I did, I did a video that wound up being two hours. And I rule... Right? Yeah, stop it. I rule. Um, and like I say, it felt like I'd been playing for maybe half an hour. 45 minutes. 
So if you're looking for a game that's a bigger time sink than Civ, and you really like the grand strategy, uh, plotting out, who are we at war with anyway? Okay, so presumably those guys. No. But yes. Yeah, if you like the grand strategy... cynical do yeah she is yeah she's totally cynical damn it just hold out Another massive stack is coming. Okay, we're gonna push these two stacks out of the way, and then... That's where I'll end the video, because otherwise I'll just wind up making another two-hour thing. Uh, so yeah, it's on sale... Uh, on Steam, I think, for, for the next, like, 24 hours or something. Ten bucks. Uh, it just came out... There's a lot of DLC for it. Uh, they just released uh, the downloadable content that allows the Muslims to be played. I haven't picked it up yet. I'll probably pick that up sometime soon. And uh, actually, yeah, I'll show you the other DLC. There's a character creation thing. Oh, another one. Where are you going? We'll take him out. No. We'll save it. Uh, there we go. Yes. So a lot of the DLCs, uh, the way they're doing it, want to add to the game, but not, like, change it completely. So, uh, one of the things I got I'll just, is the ruler designer. So you can come in here and change up. Basically, you can create whatever you want for a character. Um, you can design your own coat of arms. You can give the attributes. Now, the way they do this, so you can't just come along and make, like, a stacked character. So they give you a certain max points you can apply, given your age. And you can add the traits in there. So you can see, if I want to be a crusader, that boosts my age up to 45. So it just sort of limits... Um, what you can be uh, so you don't make a super character that's just going to dominate the gameplay. So that's that's kind of a nice way to, to limit it and uh, I mean these are pretty there's a lot going on with the uh, the creation of your own coat of arms so you can do pretty much I mean there's a lot you can do change up the color schemes as well and the appearance most importantly beards it's a shame they've only got eight of them but that's just an amazing neck beard perfect for a king 
And uh, they've got other other stuff that's like uh, music packs, region specific. So if you're playing in England, you get you know more English music. If you're playing, uh, I think they released an Arab music pack for the Muslim play. And yeah, so ten bucks, really good game, really good time sink. Uh, if this looks interesting, I might consider doing a let's play of this. But given what's going on like given just the play style of it I don't know how well it would work out but uh, highly recommend you guys pick this up if you're looking for a new game it's cheap 10 bucks there you go Crusader Kings 2 uh, we'll be back tomorrow with Smoky Skies and probably more Austria as well so thumbs up if you like this leave your comments questions um, thoughts on the game thoughts on seeing more of the game or not whatever, and uh, yeah, thanks for watching, we'll see you guys next time.